Good morning, and welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist for this 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Monsignor Michael Champ, pastor and bishop of the Old Catholic Church in Tucson. Welcome. We begin with our opening song, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fails me never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, with gentle care he leads me, and where the verdant pastures grow, with heavenly food he feeds me. Perverse and foolish I have strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. You spread a table in my sight, your saving grace bestowing, and oh, what joy and true delight from your pure chalice flowing. And so through all the length of days, your goodness fails me never. Good Shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house forever. Our entrance antiphon today is from Psalm 38. Do not abandon me, Lord, my God. Do not go away from me. Hurry to help me, Lord, my Savior. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order to celebrate our sacred mystery today, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. In Adam's sin, the gates of heaven were closed, but we were made one with God and heirs to the kingdom of heaven in our baptism. We are thankful for our redemption. May Almighty God forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now begin the Liturgy of the Word. Let us pray today in the presence of God, the source of every good. Father in heaven, God of power and Lord of mercy, from whose fullness we have received, direct our steps in everyday efforts. May the changing moods of the human heart and the limits which our failings impose on hope, never blind us to you and your source of every good. Faith gives us the promise of peace and makes us known to the demands of love. Remove the selfishness that blurs the vision of faith. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our first reading, the Hebrews saw themselves as related to God in a sacred partnership. It was called a covenant in which God had chosen them to be his partners. In this passage, Moses emphasizes they must fear the Lord and keep his commandments. In the second part, we have the so-called Shema Israel, hear, O Israel, the daily Jewish prayer. 
Hear now these words from Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep all his statutes and commandments, which I enjoin on you throughout the days of your lives, and thus have long life. Hear then, O Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin upon you today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. Join me. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from all my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior, you who gave great victories to your King and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. In our second reading, the attempt to explain what Jesus means to us with reference to the functions of the Jewish high priests in the Jerusalem temple is a very fertile one. Christians of Jewish origin, to whom this letter was addressed, understand clearly the author's words. The condition for us to savor in this comparison is what we will be acquainted with in our Bible study, with regular reading. Hear now these words from Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were, they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer daily sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself on the cross. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthy proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one, and there is no other than he and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. 
And when Jesus saw that he had answered with understanding, he said to the scribe, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every year as we proceed through the liturgies of the weeks, we come upon this particular setting in which Jesus was confronted by the scribes and the Pharisees, and they asked him very difficult questions in order to trap him. In this particular pericope that we have today, Jesus is not looking to defend himself from a trap, but he's answering the scribe with his own words, that is to say the scribe's own words, when they pray the Jewish prayer, Shema, hear, O Israel. This is a daily prayer in the Jewish faith, and is something that we could adopt and keep with us as well. Love of God is something that comes naturally to most of us. When we consider that we are a creation of the Almighty, and that for us to even exist on, on earth or exist at all, as opposed to not exist, is something that is absolute wonder. When one thinks of all of the coincidental things that had to happen back through history, for us to even exist, it is a mind-expanding experience. So it's not difficult for us to profess love to the Almighty, who gave us everything that we know, gave us ourselves, gave us our mind, our soul, and the ability to be human beings at this time in history, or any time for that matter. The second commandment is more difficult. To love someone as yourself is the very definition of love. Paul in 1 Corinthians gives us all the characteristics that love has. Love is not blind. Love is not jealous. Love does not bear false witness. And the others. But when one considers what perfect love is, only Jesus Christ comes to mind, for he was the embodiment of perfect love for us. So for us to say that we must love our neighbors as ourselves is also tantamount to, say, tantamount to saying that we must love everyone with whom we encounter in our world the same way we would love a spouse or a beloved friend. We must put ourselves in a position to be willing to sacrifice our life for their benefit, should the case arise. This is a difficult commandment. For there are many people in this world that most of us find that we cannot like, let alone love. But Jesus said we must put that aside if we are to attain to eternal life. We must put aside our petty jealousy our preconceived notions of what is an acceptable behavior or an acceptable appearance or an acceptable attitude toward life. And we must love all with whom we have an encounter just as we would love our very selves. The essence of this commandment is so broad reaching many areas of our existence that it is almost impossible to fully comprehend. When we are out in our world, we go about our daily routines, and we encounter people all the time. As soon as we drive out in traffic, we encounter others that don't have the same respect for traffic and traffic courtesies that we have. And this makes it difficult to love them. For they seem to be treading upon our sovereign right that we see it to be a part of society. This is the very essence 
of the commandment. We must extend to all the courtesy, the justice, the respect, and the honor that we would assume for ourselves. So that person who is disregarding others' courtesies and others' rights, if you will, in traffic, we must stand back and say his particular perspective is of value just as ours is. That's why in my particular habit, I tend to give everyone a wide berth. I guess that comes from more than 50 years on two wheels when I was a motorcyclist and I always felt, well, I'm really wrong when I'm out here with all these huge vehicles in my small motorcycle. But that has carried over even when I'm in a larger vehicle. And now that I'm driving around in a small sports car, I, I feel that same reluctance to put myself out there and assert my rights in traffic. But the same thing could be applied to everyday encounters, say, in the grocery store, or on the street, or in meetings with other people, or just casual acquaintances as we walk up and down the streets of our home. These are things that we must keep in mind. Others are loved by God and just the same as we are deserve our love as well. God love you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let us join together now and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of the mingling of this water and wine help us to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice 
that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. I will wash my hands among the innocent and encompass your altar, O Lord, that I might hear the voice of your praise and tell of all your wondrous works. I loved, O Lord, the beauty of your house, the place where your glory dwells. Take not away my soul, O God, with the wicked, and my life with men of blood, in whose hands are iniquities and filled with gifts. But as for me, I have walked in my innocence. Redeem me and have mercy on me. In the churches I will bless you, O Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my guilt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and that of all his church. God of mercy, we offer you a pure sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In you we live and move and have our being. Each day you show us a Father's love. Your Holy Spirit dwelling within us gives us on earth the hope of an ending joy. Your gift of the Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead, is the foretaste and promise of the Paschal Feast of Heaven. With thankful praise in the company of the angels, we glorify the wonders of your power. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness. All your actions show us your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness and set us over the whole world to serve you, our Creator, and rule over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped us all to seek and find you. Again and again, you offered us a covenant and, through the prophets, taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his own in this world. And when the time came for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, he showed the death of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread into his sacred hands, and looking up to you, his heavenly Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, who will be shed for you and for all, so that sins might be forgiven. 
Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his ascent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice you have given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one mystical body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially our religious leaders and patriarchs. Joris, our patriarch in Utrecht, Francis, Bishop of Rome, for me, your humble servant, and for bishops and clergy everywhere. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God and your apostles and saints. Then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask our Father to forgive our sins and bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and shelter from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of our church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be guarded from you. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiet anima meam, in vitam eternam, amen.
Sanguis Domini Nostru Jesu Christi Castorier Anima Meam, in Vitam Eternam Amen.
Lord, you will show me the path of life and fill me with joy in your presence. Let us pray. Lord, you give new hope to mankind in this Holy Eucharist. May the power of your love continue its saving work among us and bring us to the joy you have promised us. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of lo and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration has ended for today. Let us go forth and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn today, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Love divine, all loves excelling, Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us your humble dwelling, All your faithful mercies crown. Jesus, source of all compassion, love unbounded, love all pure, visit us with your salvation, let your love in us endure. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all your life receive. Suddenly return, and never, never more your temples leave. Lord, we would be always blessing, serve you as your hosts above. Praise and pray to you without ceasing. Glory in your precious love. Finish then your new creation, pure and spotless, gracious Lord. Let us see your great salvation perfectly in you restored. Changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we sing before the Almighty, lost in wonder, love, and praise. God love you all, and thank you for being with us today.